is Steve Kempf with the People Not Titles podcast, and we are super excited to continue our series on the ingredients for success and taking a look at what it takes for us to go to the next level. On our last success series episode, we talked about courage, what it is, when you need it, and how you can develop it over time. Aristotle thought courage was the first of many characteristics of success and that it led to all the others. And frankly, I agree with him. So I have a few questions for you. Were you more courageous over the last few weeks? Did you step out of your comfort zone? Maybe pause this just for a moment. Take a look at your calendar and maybe reflect back and ask, where was I courageous? When did I shrink back when I should have stepped forward? When fear rose up, what was my response? Hey, no shame here. Don't beat yourself up. Congratulate yourself for the wins. Chalk up the losses as a learning experience. Ask yourself another question. Are you stuck right now anywhere because of fear? Let's make a deal. Take those one or two areas and make up your mind to take some action. Maybe it's a step to get started. Maybe it's talking to someone to get some advice. Maybe it's you just saying, I ain't doing that. And so just scratch it off the list and don't beat yourself up anymore. Okay. Okay, great. Today, I want to talk about a very close ally of courage, which is faith. We are going to talk about the role faith plays in our success and our ability to move to higher ground. Imagine a world where hope flickers like a candle in the wind, where uncertainty looms in every corner, and where despair threatens to engulf us. In the face of such challenges, it is faith that becomes our guiding light and our steadfast anchor in the stormy seas of life. We will take a few minutes to explore the profound power of faith, to delve into its transformative capabilities and to ignite the flames of conviction that reside in each one of us. So let us embark on this journey together as we delve into the essence of faith and discover its unwavering strength to uplift, inspire, and carry us forward. Let us begin. Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Keeping in mind that although you don't see the staircase, you do have to have it in your internal vision. And we will talk about this internal vision in a moment. Oxford's definition of faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something and or a strong belief in God, higher power, or in the doctrines of religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Faith is derived from the Latin word fides or fides, depending on who you ask, which means a confidence or trust in a person, a thing, or a concept. The scriptures say that faith is the substance or assurance of things we hope for but have not yet received. I love the Amplified Bible, which tries to lay it out a more complete version of the scripture. It says, now faith is the assurance or title or deed and confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Imagine having belief that something is gonna happen so much so that you hold a title, a deed, or ownership to it, knowing that it's guaranteed. Now, there are many different faiths, many different beliefs, many different religions, and they are personal and important to each and every one of us. This is not a debate about any of that. This discussion centers around the role of faith in success. It is not all encompassing, but it could spark in you some thought or some inspiration which will help you on your journey. Before any great achievement and prior to any admirable endeavor is accomplished, there must be faith. It is indispensable. Faith is tricky to describe, but you know it when you see it, and you definitely know it when you have it. 
It reveals itself in the form of confidence, determination, vision, and so many other things. So what do we need to have faith in to succeed in business? Well, first, you need to have faith in yourself. You see, you're unique. You are special. You're a miracle. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. There is only one you. You, as a human being, have amazing potential. Potential is described as latent qualities or abilities that may be developed and lead to future success or usefulness. There was a time that you didn't even know how to take a first step or add one plus one together to make two. You went from that to running and dancing and solving complicated problems daily. So wherever you are at, whatever stage in life, financial or relational circumstances, etc., you can absolutely go so much further. Before you do, you have to have faith and belief that you can. So many people believe that their growth period is over or that it's too late to learn something new or achieve great things. It is up to you and to you alone to decide if that's true. If you believe that is true, you are and you will be right and you'll never change. If you hear that your growth period is over, that your day is done, that there's nothing more or better for you, and you stand up and shout, B.S., it's not over, I've got plenty to do, then you, my friend, are also right. If you want to succeed at anything, if you want to become more than it appears that you are, you have to believe that it can happen. Deepak Chopra said at the age of 76, most people don't grow old, they stop growing and become old. So in order to succeed, you have to have faith that just like you grew from where you started to where you're at right now, you can grow further. You can take massive leaps and bounds if you desire to do so. Simply put, you have to look at the vision of where you want to go and who you want to be and believe that you can get there. There are people who look at an instrument and have no idea how to even hold it and a few years later are playing some of the most complex music known to man and stirring the hearts of their audience. I think of our daughter Shayla, who we interviewed on in our podcast last year. Seven years ago, she started her military and nursing career, and now she's a first lieutenant in the Army, leading men and women, and she's also a nurse, caring for her patients with ama amazing compassion and expertise. If I would have said seven years ago, when she did her first push-up and opened her first medical book that she would be living on her own, running a hospital full of soldiers and, f and fellow nurses and caring for people who are ill and whose lives depend on her care, one could have said, but what makes you so confident of such a thing? What proof is there that this could be so? And you know what? There was no proof, only a vision in her head that she clung to and worked towards. At some point on her journey, she saw herself as a nurse. She saw herself as a leader. She saw herself as someone who she is becoming as opposed to who she is. And with that vision in her mind and the track to run on, she is now all those things and becoming more every day. Before any success can happen, before any of it can become a reality, there has to be faith. Faith that you can become the person who has the talents, the skills, the abilities, and the mindset to get the results. To be successful, you have to change. You have to become something different than who you are. There's a lot of talk recently about the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset. Fixed declares, I'm this person and I will never be any different. Growth mindset says, I may be this person now, but there is no reason I can't evolve, improve, and become something or someone different. Faith is the bridge that takes you from the person you are to the person you know you can be. If you don't have faith and belief in what you might and could be, who you are will remain your reality and very little change will ever occur. What is, is a powerful limiter to what might be. What is wants to keep you where you are at. What might be is for you to envision 
and then pursue with great vigor. We are truly the co-creators and main catalysts of our own realities, and your future depends more on you than anyone or anything else. Faith is this. Although there is no proof, although there's no visible evidence, although there's no consensus that it can happen, you set out to do it anyway. She can't sell. She doesn't have any experience. She envisions the salesperson she can become and becomes it. He can't excel. He doesn't have the education. He envisions his goals and what he is equipped with and excels anyway. Too old, too fat, too slow, too short, too shy, too whatever. In the face of all the reasons why not, Faith says, I see what I want to become. I know that what separates me from that is time, effort, faith, and belief, and I'm sure I can become it. In fact, I hold the title and the deed to my future with faith. You see, you can have the daily routine and the habits down to a T, but if you don't have the vision of where the routine and habits will bring you, it will be extremely difficult for you to get there. We call this identity. James Clear in his book Atomic Habits says this, the key to building lasting habits is focusing on creating a new identity first. Your current behaviors are simply a reflection of your current identity. What you do now is a mirror image of the type of person you believe that you are, either consciously or subconsciously. Once you've developed that faith in yourself, you also need faith in the track you're on. Most people who have had success have to have some faith in the system they're in. If you are a franchisee, you have to believe you are with the right company. If you join a real estate sales group, you have to have faith in their system and their processes. And if you follow it, that you're gonna make some success of yourself. In short, as you pursue success, it is helpful to have a model or a mold or a forerunner who has gone before you to chart the path of success. Sure, you're gonna have some differences and you're gonna add your own unique strategy and personality, but you are going to need some rails to run on. I think of attorney Ernie Rose from DKMO Law. Fresh out of law school, Ernie started working for an attorney sole proprietor. Ernie supported that attorney and helped out however he could. That attorney passed away and Ernie had the responsibility of shutting down that law firm. He moved to another larger firm as an associate and he watched how all of the other partners worked. In that, he caught a vision for his own life, what being a partner would mean, and now, after a few years of hard work, sacrifice, successes, and failures, he is a partner with DKMO Law in Arlington Heights. I remember when I opened up my first financial office. I was working it for several years and just plateaued. And at the time, there wasn't really a model of great success for me in the Chicagoland area. I went out of town for a seminar and heard a speaker who I really resonated with. His office was in Kansas City. I packed up my car, stayed several days in Kansas City. He was gracious enough to have me in his office. I was able to shadow him, his salespeople, his staff. I sat in meetings and trainings. I came home after catching a vision with great confidence not just in myself, but in a system. I had faith that if I would run down that same track, I could make it. And you know what? I did. Once you have a vision of who you want to be and where you want to go, faith in a process or system or roadmap is important. Finally, for the sake of this conversation, I will, have you, I will encourage you to have faith in the process of sowing and reaping. A part of the acceptance of the law of sowing and reaping is this. You are currently reaping the life that you sowed or didn't sow years ago. Acceptance of this and taking radical responsibility for your current state of affairs will help you to capture a vision of your future and feel empowered to pursue it. It is very hard to blame everyone else for your position in life to not take ownership of where you're at and how your past actions or lack of action has gotten you to this point, and at the same time, grab onto the concept that you're the master of your destiny and your future. 
if you are blaming someone else for your current state, you are also perhaps even unwittingly also giving that same someone the power over your future. The sooner you accept responsibility for where you're, where you're at, the sooner you take back the power to get to where you're going. First things first, accept responsibility for where you were at. Didn't have a good hand dealt to you, things didn't go your way, health issues, unexpected calamities, business failures, people treat you unfairly, that's called life. For good or for bad, own where you're at. Don't beat yourself up. There's plenty of good you accomplished, I'm sure of it. Rejoice in it. Not where you want to be, who is? That is okay too. Have gratitude, accept all that was, and now let's look into the future. If you have that nailed down, now you are ready to say, the greatest thing I have going for me is that I have the ability to envision, create, and pursue my future, and that nothing can stop me but myself. That is fantastic news. Now, know that what you sow, you will also reap. So what are the things we should be sowing? Intelligent effort, hard work, a commitment to self-improvement, intentional thinking, and much more. Surely as you plant corn, you will get corn. And as you plant grass, grass will come up. If you plant the right efforts, you will also surely have the harvest. Be assured of this. If you neglect to work, neglect to show up, neglect to apply focused energy to where you want to be, you will surely receive the harvest of a neglected garden weeds, a little bit of accidental growth here and there, and mostly barren grounds. A neglected garden will bring you whatever has been planted, except for the fact that each year, more and more weeds will take over until there's hardly anything useful. For those of you who have had a garden and then neglected it for a year or two, during those few years of neglect, there might be a tomato plant that grows here or squash or cucumbers or whatever that pop up accidentally here or there, but eventually, the weeds will rule over all of them. This is true because the seeds of the fruits and vegetables planted seasons ago are still bearing few. But each year, without intention, you will have less of the good stuff and more of the stuff you don't want. Until one day, the weeds and the rest of the nonsense choke out any good growth at all. And unfortunately, that is how many a person ends their life. I don't want to be a bummer, and it does not have to be this way. There is one area of sowing and reaping that I really want to emphasize for this subject matter, and it revolves around your thoughts and how they ultimately create your reality. Debbie Boone said, dreams are the seeds of change. Nothing grows without a seed, and nothing will change without a dream. I love that. Scripture says, as a person thinks in their heart, so they are. Most people completely underestimate the power of their thoughts and dreams. Being deliberate about your thought life is one of the easiest yet most powerful ways to change the course of direction of your life. Most people are looking for the habits, the secrets, the strategies. And so when they hear that if they can take control of their thoughts, that they can change their destiny, they scoff and laugh and say, too easy, I'll look somewhere else. Fenwick Holmes, the early 19th century author of the book, The Law of Mind in Action, says, I am, through the power of thought, the master of my own fate. This also relates to the identi identity concept, which we mentioned earlier, as I believe it is a key to developing strong, intentional faith. I want you to imagine a shelf with a box on it. The box contains a jigsaw puzzle. There's a title on the side of the box that says, Your Life. You pull it out and take a look. What is typically on the cover of a jigsaw puzzle box? That's right, it's a picture. The picture resembles the finished product. If all the pieces were put together successfully, the picture on the box would be the result. Naturally, the more detailed the picture is, the easier it is to put all the pieces together successfully. What if there were no pictures on the box? Could you imagine putting together the puzzle pieces without the vision of the completed product? How hard would it be to complete the task? 
all these puzzle pieces and no picture to help you put it all together. How frustrating, how futile. So I know the metaphor is not perfect, but I want you to consider for a moment that your life is very much like a puzzle box. You have all the pieces in the box, how you were created, your life experiences, education, the opportunities you might have before you, your family, your daily habits, actions, etc. And now you have the picture on the box. For some, the picture is blank because you've never considered what you really want out of life. It is said that one out of a hundred people have given a clear thought to why they are here, who they want to become, and then considered it enough to develop a detailed picture. How many people have we seen who had all the right stuff and yet never accomplished much of anything? You might feel this way in your own life, perhaps. For others, the picture is not the one that they would have drawn for themselves, but one that someone else has drawn. I call this the default picture, a picture drawn out by your life circumstances and without any of your intention whatsoever. Perhaps a parent or those in your social circle, circle, peer pressure, or perhaps a significant other. Perhaps your picture was drawn by a dysfunctional artist. Maybe past failures in life have created a picture that nothing good can happen. Unconsciously, we are putting together a puzzle to match a picture that we have not created for ourselves. at best and maybe even a picture that is harmful and unfavorable at worst. Some are afraid of really dreaming because they're afraid of disappointment. They're afraid if they contemplate what they really want too deeply that they will wind up setting their heart on something that they just won't be able to achieve. Sometimes it's scary to dream. That's where our courage we talked about last time will help you. So check out that podcast. Well, I've been in all these camps. There's an old Arabic proverb, he who risks nothing gains nothing. Wayne Gretzky says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It is better to dream and fall short than to not dream at all and succeed at nothing. I want to challenge you to dream again. It is never too late to dream. Getting back to the puzzle metaphor, some have a vague picture or something in the way of a stick figure drawings with a lot of blank space. You can imagine how difficult it would be to put together a puzzle when the drawing is vague without much detail. What is the picture on the outside of the puzzle box called your life? Have you considered it? What would the puzzle box of your family look like? What would the puzzle box of your house, your career, your business, your health, your relationships, your hobbies? Some call it a vision board. Great thinker and psychologist Dr. Joe Dispenza has something called mind movies where you create detailed, intentional short movies that describe an area of your life that is aspirational, who you want to become, and review it again and again to stoke the flames of desire, faith, and belief. In short, to develop faith, you have to capture a vivid vision for your life or an area of your life. This takes time, effort, determination, careful thought, and introspection. You might be begin by assessing your current state of affairs. Who are you? Or who do you say you are? How did you get here? Was it with great intention and conscious decision and living? Or have you been on autopilot, hoping good things will happen to you? It has been said, there are those who watch things happen, there are those who make things happen, and then there's those who wonder, what the hell just happened? I want to encourage you to dream. Who do you want to become? What is this new identity? You might say, Steve, I haven't dreamed in a while, or I tried and dreamed once and it didn't work out for me. We've all been there. I failed in business, lost money, messed up relationships, and all the rest. Rather than look at those things as final and fatal, I view them as learning lessons that are vital for my next step in life, and I'm urging you to do the same. Quit looking at the scoreboard of yesterday's game and start playing today's game. I want to encourage you to dream again and to dream in great detail. Draw the picture out as clear as you can make it. Perhaps it might be more helpful to develop one aspect of your life and draft a picture or a vision for it and then pursue it with vigor. And then you can repu replicate the same thing in other areas of your life. If you start with your health and draw a clear vision and a picture of who you want to become and work towards it, then you can take those same principles and expand it into other areas of your life. You've already proven the law of sowing and reaping works. 
professional, financial, relational, spiritual, and on and on. After you've created the picture of your future clearly, you can then think about the actions and strategies, the habits you'll need to employ, the way you inventory and measure your progress, and all the rest of the ingredients vital to success. We all might have heard that our body has a way of renewing itself with constant creation of cells. Did you know that the cells in some of your organs renew every few days? That the skin renews every few weeks? And that the cells in your liver may take just a few months to completely renew? But you know something? The cells in your brain do not typically renew. This suggests to me that we need to be intentional about our thoughts. Otherwise, they will be with us all of our lives. One of our great podcast guests, luxury agent extraordinaire Michael Lafito, has a saying that says, it's not garbage in, garbage out. It's garbage in, garbage stays. As it relates to this, I want to share a scripture with you that says this. Do not conform yourself to this world, but transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. I will suggest that this intentional dreaming is a form of renewing your mind. I want to encourage you to reflect and remind yourself of your dreams. Look at the picture again and again, daily or even just a few times a day. Add more color, more detail so that it comes alive. Adjust, tweak it, and keep adapting as you listen to your heart and pursue your dreams. Oftentimes, I'll draft up a plan, and as I get on my way to pursuing it, I realize it is not what I wanted at all and have to pivot or adjust course a bit to get where my heart really wants to go. All that to say that nothing happens if you don't begin with an original, intentional plan. Faith is the bridge that can take you from who you are now to who you want to become. Faith is a belief that you can get there. You strengthen faith by getting clear about who you want to become, crystal clear in fact, and then take the small actions daily down that road. Your faith gets strengthened by resistance. When you first begin, getting momentum is difficult. Consider resistance a sign that you're leaving your current destination and heading to another new one. It takes a massive amount of energy to get a train to leave the station or to get lift off on a large aircraft. Don't expect it to be easy and expect anything you begin to take a ton of your time, energy, and focus. Life will test your determination to see just how serious you are about pursuing your new picture. Your faith is encouraged by successes, however small they might be. Look at your wins and congratulate yourself. If you're on a health kick, celebrate your first trip to the gym or a great week of successful eating habits. Your faith is encouraged and strengthened by your advocates who are cheering you on along the way. There's a time for constructive criticism from the ones you love. However, there's also a time for cheerleaders and encouragers. Make sure you gather the right group around you and tune out or even weed out the naysayers. Your faith is encouraged and strengthened by the examples that have gone before you. Get the right role models and mentors in your camp. And your faith is encouraged and strengthened by going back to the picture and marinating in the sights, the smells, and the voices, and most importantly, the feelings of your success. So as we wrap up, I want to give you 10 pointers to help you develop your faith. Okay, so here we go. Number one, take time to reflect and plan. Put it on your calendar. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it'll be the most rewarding. There are so many resources to build your life plan online. I personally do like, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's direction on building an intentional life, and we'll put those resources in the show notes. Number two, seeking knowledge and understanding. Be a learner. Be curious. And I don't mean learning to support what you already think you know. Get outside your comfort zone with your learning. Seek wisdom on building your new life from sources that you aren't currently tapping into. Number three, practice gratitude. Cultivate a mindset of gratitude by acknowledging and appreciating the blessings in your life. Recognize the role of faith in guiding you through challenges and providing support. Have you already reached some goals in your life? Great. Give thanks. Number four, connecting with the community. Engage with like-minded individuals who share similar beliefs and values. 
join groups or communities where you can find support, inspiration, and opportunities for growth. Again, get out of your comfort zone with this. Meet other people who are going for the same thing you're going for. You've heard the saying, you can't hang out with the turkeys and soar with the eagles at the same time. Well, find some eagles, whether it be online, via books, in person, whatever it takes. So number five, strengthening spiritual practices. Explore and develop spiritual practices that resonate with you. This could include prayer, meditation, mindfulness, or engaging in rituals that deepen your connection to your faith. For me, moments of silence and prayer during the day are vital for me to get my compass set back to true north. Number six, embracing doubt and questioning. Allow yourself to question and engage with doubts and uncertainties. It is through questioning and seeking answers that faith and belief can be deepened and strengthened. It starts to become part of your very fabric. Number seven, drawing from inspiration from texts and scriptures and other profound kind of wisdom. Engage with sacred texts, scriptures, philosophical writings that resonate with your faith. Extract wisdom and guidance that can inspire and deepen your understanding of faith. I'm telling you, if you open up the book of Proverbs and read those one a day for 30 days, I think there's 31 of them, so one a day, you will just explode with inspiration and growth. Number eight, living in alignment with your values. Strive to align your actions and behaviors with the values and principles rooted in your faith. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. Embodying these values and goals in your daily life reinforces your faith and strengthens your commitment. Number nine, embrace uh, adversity as an opportunity. View challenges and setbacks as opportunities for growth and faith building. Embrace resilience and trust that your faith will carry you through the difficult times. Everyone goes through tough times, so stop avoiding them and embrace it as part of the process. Number 10, cultivating a supportive environment. Surround yourselves with individuals who will uplift and inspire you in your journey. And so foster those relationships, mentors, coaches, online examples. I have a dynamic group of people I engage with who are like-minded and are going for the same thing. And it just lifts me up and empowers me and gives me courage, faith, belief, all those things. So saving the best for last, I believe that you have to have a faith in a higher power in God, who I believe is the source of all good things. This faith in that higher power opens up the door to wisdom, strength, divine vision, purpose, calling that is beyond yourself and at a next kind of higher level. What good is it that a man gains the whole world but loses his or her soul? Make sure your relationship with a higher power is a priority for you. Be intentional about establishing and keeping that connection with God. If you message me, I'm happy to help you on your journey or just be a sounding board for you. Okay, well that wraps up this edition on success principles, a very important one, faith. I hope it was helpful and look forward to your comments and feedback. This is Steve Kemp with the People Not Titles podcast.